Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight, where we look at what's really going on in the world of the BRICS. Now, there's a growing consensus among analysts that the BRICS group of nations are going to announce the introduction of a trading platform or currency for the settlement of trade between BRICS members. I mean, according to analysts, they anticipate that the multi-currency payment platform will be unveiled at the forthcoming BRICS summit meeting in Kazan at the end of October. So... How is this likely to affect the fiat currencies like the dollar and the euro? Plus, will it make payments between the BRICS countries seamless and easy? Also, what problems are needed to be overcome for this BRICS payment system or currency to be widely used and successful? So stick with me while I look at through what is likely to happen. Well, let's start with the dollar. At a campaign rally in Wisconsin earlier this month, the US presidential candidate and former president Donald Trump gave his America first campaign a second wind by threatening 100% tariffs on any country that ditched the dollar. Now, to me, he seems to be the only US politician that has actually understood that weaponizing the dollar was a measure that was likely to lead to its eventual downfall. All the others seem to have their heads in the sand, not realising or not clearly understanding that forcing some of the world's largest economies away from using the dollar could have a devastating effect on its primacy in the long run. Trump, however, did not inform his supporters that these dollar protecting measures would have a significant impact on American families, as many consumer goods would likely double in price. I mean... Approximately 70% of the non-food products available at Walmart and Target supermarkets are sourced from China, which is a leading nation in the process of de-dollarization. I mean, China's dumped hundreds of billions of dollars of US Treasury and Russia has completely de-dollarized its economy. And none of its current reserves are now in dollars. Plus China and Russia now trade in their own currencies. I mean, Trump made these remarks long away uh, annual summit of BRICS that's going to take place at the end of October in Kazan. Now, it's anticipated that that meeting will reveal a plan of action for the development of an alternative to the current base dollar financial system. Now, while actual details remain scarce, some analysts are, are anticipating the announcement of a multi-currency payment platform at the meeting. I mean, some observers even think that the announcement of a roadmap for the launch of a gold-backed BRICS trading currency, similar to what occurred back at the Bretton Woods system, is likely. Now, the emergence of an alternative to the current dollar system would be of historic significance for a number of reasons. First, it would be the first significant step towards a new global financial system, moving away from what occurred back in 1944 with the Bretton Woods Agreement. I mean, the Bretton Woods saw the dollar pegged to a fixed price for an ounce of gold, with other currencies also pegged to the dollar. I mean, countries with positive trade balance in the US currency could exchange their currency for gold. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't last. I mean, the dollar system provided financial stability and gave the US virtually undisputed control over the global financial system. Then the US banks assumed the role of clearing houses for global trade and everybody had to buy dollars. I mean, so even Japanese companies were required to purchase dollars to settle an invoice with a supplier in India. Now, as a result of this centralization, the United States was able to exclude any business or country from the global financial system, which they've done frequently re recently. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, to further develop it. You can do this by making a donation, which is done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen on the right hand side. Everybody who donates gets a personal thank you from me, and I'm thanking you all just for uh, watching today. I really appreciate it. Now, the Bretton Woods system began to show its weakness back in 1971 when Richard Nixon removed the dollar's link to gold. 
mean, this was in response to its widening trade deficit. I mean, the United States opted to close the gold window rather than pursue a balanced trade position, which effectively reneged on all the commitments that were made back then. Now, the consequences of this decision have been significant. I mean, the US government was then freed from the constraints of the gold standard and abandoned all physical fiscal discipline and embarked on a period of significant spending. I mean, from 1971 to 2024, the US national debt has gone from $400 billion to $35 trillion. And that's more than their GDP, 100%. The servicing of their debt now is the largest debt in the US budget, even the ex exceeding their defence spending. Consequently, there's a number of prominent economists and CEOs are issuing warnings. I mean, Tesla CEO Elon Musk cautioned that he said the United States is on an unsustainable fiscal trajectory that could result in its bankruptcy if its current spending rates persist. I mean, in particular, the United States could find itself unable to rely on creditors who are going to purchase its debt. I mean, China sold hundreds of billions of dollars of its holdings in US treasuries in recent years, and investors have reduced their holdings of government debt. The government, the print money printing is often used, but what they mean is debt issuance. Now, let's look at the BRICS versus the G7. I mean, even without considering the US a significant debt, a gradual move away from the dollar is happening. I mean, the US states' uh, a share of global economy is gradually diminishing. In 2016, the combined GDP of the BRICS countries was way ahead of the G7. The BRICS now is 35% of global output compared to 30% for the GDP of this G7. 30%. China is now 30% of global industrial output, which is twice that of the United States. Now, the design of a financial or monetary architecture for countries as diverse as the BRICS members is a seriously complex undertaking. However, there are some historical precedents that do offer some guidance. I mean, in a recent development, Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Rybakov has pr proposed the introduction of a currency based on the European Currency Unit, which was a predecessor of the Euro. This concept was first proposed in 1979, uh, and that was a response to the closing of the gold window. Now, in the absence of the gold peg, European currencies began to fluctuate significantly and the ECU became a common unit of account and against each other and it provides stability to the currency markets. Now the other potentially useful template is the so-called Bancor, which is a currency unit proposed by the economist John Maynard Keynes during the Bretton Woods conference. I mean, Keynes conceived the Bancor as a supranational unit of account tied to a basket of commodities including oil and wheat. Now that would guarantee that its value would be linked to actual tangible economic resources rather than being susceptible just to fluctuations in national currencies caused by speculators. However, the United States obviously declined to adopt the Bancor on grounds that it would impede free trade. However, the persistent imbalances, not only that the US's significant trade deficit with China, served to reinforce that Keynes was absolutely right. Now, the launch of the M bridge is happening. While a single BRICS currency is unlikely in the near term, China is collaborating with other countries on M bridge, which is a blockchain based platform that facilitates financial transactions in multiple currencies. I mean, Embridge is a blockchain platform jointly developed by the central banks of China, Thailand, the United Arab Emirates and Hong Kong, and it enables instant peer-to-peer -peer transactions without the involvement of third parties. I mean, the platform is reported to utilise blockchain technology comparable to the Ethereum cryptocurrency in addition to supporting central bank digital currencies. Now, the Embridge platform is designed to streamline international trade financing, reducing the cost for all the parties involved. This means a Thai company can sell its rice to a Singaporean trader in Thai bar or any other agreed currency. The transactions will be completed instantaneously and with no need for third party involvements. 
I mean, in Enbridge, banks from participating countries act as, actually as nodes on a single network. Now, the current membership of the BRICS group, which is the five founding members, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, plus Ethiopia, Egypt, Iran, and the United Arab Emirates, over 40 other countries have decided that they want to join, and it could end up being more than 100. But the BRICS group has surprised the international community last month when it said there was going to be a halt to the acceptance of new members. Now, there was no reason provided, but I think the freeze may be related to the complexities of developing the new financial architecture that is going to have a truly global impact. Now, it's evident that the group does not require any form of uh, accusations regarding the potential for a financial crisis. BRICS future direction is going to be influenced by a number of factors. I mean, one of them is to what extent is the US prepared to defend the dollar against all comers? How will the US address the widening debt and trade uh, imbalances it has? What will be the outcome for its increasingly fractured political system? I mean, while President Trump's pledge to penalise nations for pursuing de-dollarisation may be largely rhetorical, the intensification of US sanctions could potentially trigger this full financial reset as a response. I mean, a potential course of action for the BRICS is the launch of a currency unit backed in part by gold and natural resources, particularly oil, minerals and metals. I mean, the group has considerable leverage given that it controls a significant portion of the planet's mineral wealth, which gives it the ability to influence global prices of those commodities. Now, one indication is that the BRICS is preparing for a potential financial reset is the unprecedented accumulation of gold. I mean, the past two years, members of the BRICS have been buying gold at unprecedented rates. I mean, historically, this monetary metal is used to recalibrate currencies in the aftermath of a financial or monetary crisis. So it's therefore inevitable that the current global financial system is looking to undergo a transformation after 80 years. I mean, let's be honest, the Bretton Woods Agreement was essentially a neo-colonial restructuring of the British Empire, which only slightly updated the financial system and moved the centre of power from London to New York. So it now seems likely that the BRICS will attempt to develop a new financial architecture from scratch with the aim of reflecting the economic and demographic realities of the 21st century rather than those of the 20th. Anyway, let's see what they come up with at the BRICS summit uh, in October in Kazan. I'm going to be there, so hopefully I'll keep you updated. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Please help me fund the channel by clicking on the thanks button and don't forget the comments. Uh, I love to see your comments, I love to read them and I love to respond to them. So I'll see you all again soon.